You're listening to Paint the Town Podcast with your hosts. LA Street Art Gallery resident artist, teacher, and founder of LA Street Art Gallery, James Chen of How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. Um, dude, we're closing in on 200 now. Almost there, man. Yeah. Should I stop yeah. doing the countdown now? I just want to let people know which episode it is. You, you no, know, I think it's good. I, I like that. I like starting with that. Um, you know what's cool, man? Uh, Rogan officially moved over to Texas today, actually, man. <clears throat> and uh, I, you know, I'm wearing his uh, the Rogan T-shirt to uh, kind of like honor that man it's a real interesting time for podcasts because i was over at uh vegas this weekend and i was just you know i'm I'm there to like hang out and like a dj a party and stuff like that and everybody's talking to me about my podcast man instead of my music man i feel like what the fuck you know what i mean but uh this is coming up man so uh you know it's just on spotify now we've been on spotify for like three years bro right so or two and a half years yeah so welcome welcome to spotify joe nice to have you um <laughs> But you know what, today, I kind of just want to jump into it because um, I feel like we're like breaking ground nowadays, man. We're like breaking artists. In the last episode, we had Marshall, uh, which was so cool to have a German artist, right? And uh, dude, I know, can't wait to go over to Hamburg and hang out with that dude. Ooh, yeah. And party. Man. Dude, and today, right here, we have, uh, I want to introduce our guest today, um, Lucky, okay. Al- Lucky Alexander, man. And um, basically... I think you'll you'll know him because on the Hollywood Boulevard we've recently seen a mural basically, right? Floor, on floor. the actual street. Yeah, on the street. Not, it's not a floor along mural. The, yeah, yeah. not like on the walls along the street, but on the actual street on the pavement. Exactly. And then I feel like there's so many times um that you know these things pop up and then you know the image goes viral, right? And then, uh, you know, everybody's like, yay, we're celebrating such an important moment, you know? And then, uh, you know who gets forget- forgot about? The fucking artist who paints it a lot of times, right? You know, you know what I mean? So I was just right, right oh, to Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, you know what? We need to find out who did this mural and uh, showcase them on L.A. Street Art Gallery, first of all. And then second of all, we need to, uh, you know, have them on, basically. So I'm going to... Doorbell. I'm gonna let him in. Go ahead. Awesome. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Let's dance to the song we're playing on the radio. Welcome, Lucky. How you doing? Hello, how are you? Good. We can hear you, but we can't see you right now. Um, is that okay. on purpose, or <laughs> we just want to make sure? Actually, we can see invisible men. I think that's, that's funny that you can actually <laughs> see invisible men. It's right. It's, I, I'm invisible. <laughs> yeah, give me just a sec. <laughs> you know yeah, what? You're, you're not supposed it. to be able to see invisible men, but I, I see invisible men. <laughs> I I'm, think one thing that I'm not that old. I mean, come on, jeez. <laughs> a lot of times we I, have some guests that come on that uh, are more in the graffiti area or in the street art area. So they choose not to uh, uh, show, show their, their face, face yeah. you know? So this morning we actually had a, a guest. There he is. There he is. We had a guest from Hamburg. So, um, you know, it's so awesome to meet you, man. I was just introducing uh, uh, just kind of like a little bit about you. I was saying that, you know, a lot of times we see this, uh, there's a, we live in crazy times and, uh, you know, we see some images of hope come up. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we've been, we've seen your floor mural pop up and then it goes viral. Everybody's like, let's celebrate this wonderful, uh, uh, momentous moment <clears throat> through this image and through this floor mural. And at the end, we have no idea who does the mural, man, <laughs> you, you know, so, uh, or who's responsible for it. So we want to, <laughs> so we want to basically, uh, you know, invite you onto the show and, uh, kind of give you a platform to, Kind of discuss anything that you wanted, but also to welcome you to our little community, LA Street Art uh, Gallery, man. This is my co-host, Teacher. Uh, I think it's this way. And uh, I'm James for the audience, man. I'm the founder of LA Street Art Gallery. I'm a DJ. I'm a music producer. 
And uh, basically, that's the show, man. We talk about street art and uh, DJing a little bit and traveling, you know, and all that kind of underground culture stuff, man. So welcome so much to the show, Lucky. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. But um, give me a second, because I feel like I'm left out. I'm put some headphones on, too. <laughs> okay, what? Okay. okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> For us, we just have these complicated mics, and uh, you know, at first. Oh, are we recording? Are we recording now? We are recording. We are recording. Okay. But we're not live, so uh, anything that you want to say, just go. Feel ahead. free. Feel free. You want to get angry about anything? Anything you want to say? Uh, just and, let yourself go. And if it, at the end, right. you think back and you're like, you know what? I don't know about that one thing. You know, <laughs> we can make it. Uh, my we. Yeah. He he can make it uh, seamless with the with the editing. You know, I'm that's I'm not the editor too. here. That's happened okay. before too. You know, some people get passionate. They're like, you know what? I'm gonna think I'm gonna leave that part private, man. So uh, you know, right? <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Um, oh yeah, we hear you, great man. Um, uh, loud and clear, dude. So uh, thank you so much again for coming on the show, man. Thank you. I definitely appreciate it. Um, I, I definitely appreciate um all the love that I've gotten from, from the mural itself and the message that it's, it's getting across. That's the important part is making sure that message gets out. So I definitely um, appreciate y'all having me and definitely appreciate um, that you all see the message that we were trying to convey of inclusivity of all black lives and um, the different intersections that uh, it encompasses. So not just the, not just the black community, not just the LGBT community, but the trans community and the non-binary community are represented there. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people, they get... Hold on just a second. I heard a term that I would like to have clarified a little bit. Um, I'm, hopefully some of our listeners are, don't know as well as myself. Did you say uh, binary? And what is... Uh... Non-binary. So we have gender non-binary folks who either um, either fall in the, um, in, in the category where they encompass both or neither. So it's, it's literally exactly what it says. So non-binary, meaning that they don't fall within the male or female. Um, they either fall in both or neither. Oh, wow. Or maybe even a whole other gender altogether. So it kind of depends on how people identify. It's a self-identifier. Well, if there's anywhere to be, some, be something like that, this is definitely the country, right? Absolutely. And you know what? It actually it gives a lot of freedom to those folks to really show up as who they are um, without being constricted by these boxes. And so um, that's one definitely thing. The one thing that I definitely um, appreciate about our non-binary siblings is that um, they do have that freedom, and they are able to kind of navigate in those spaces and not necessarily have the same rules that binary folks do have. I think that's a really well eloquent way to put it, man. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to pull up the mural that I'm talking about for our YouTube audience. Normally, this audio, uh, this show is basically. Um, most of our listeners, I would say, listen to it, but you know, sometimes we have a, a our, our guys also want to look at our faces, you know. Um, and today might be a special case. So this is the a cool the the mural I'm talking about, right? Lucky, right? So you know, this one, yeah, this one actually is the the initial one. I designed both um, iterations of the mural, and so the one that is now permanent oh. is the one that was on my uh, my Instagram. Oh yes, right here. I'm sorry, I pulled up the wrong one. Sorry about that. There you go. Oh, this wow. It's kind of hard to see the, the Nice. Image. So it's in the median. Right Perfect. Right. It's so big that it's hard to capture the aerial image of it, obviously. Well, right? so. There is an aerial image there. If you go back to my, the, the aerial image right there. Oh, okay. wow. Nice. So that is the newest iteration. Um, I did design both of those um, designs and I changed it a little bit on the second round uh, because one, I had a little more time to kind of really think this out and really, really, you know, grab all of the things that I wanted. And I changed very little about it, but um, so the all is still in trans colors. The black is in the yellow that um, a lot of the other standard Black Lives Matter um, murals are in. And then lives is in the non-binary colors and then matter is in the the trans colors i mean i'm sorry it's in the um, lgbt standard colors right those are all pride flags for those different demographics mm -hmm. and as well i laid it on a black background to uplift our ancestors and those that came before us that started this work and so i wanted to make sure that we included everyone and that we made sure that everyone was represented i love that awesome. yeah there's so much thought put into each color and location man because um you know sometimes inclusivity have i love it Sometimes we have artists explain and a lot of times, um, you know, it's a feeling, right? So, I mean, I love it when there's some like 
a lot of like deep thought put into it. <clears throat> now, actually, when I saw the last time I saw this um, this mural, it actually said like all trans lives, all trans Black Lives Matter. I think right, or was uh, um, maybe, maybe I'm confused, but but it's yeah, cool. Yeah, it's not this one. Now, um, Black Trans Lives Matter is in um, the Compton District in San, uh, San Francisco. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Awesome, so there, awesome. There is one that in existence. <laughs> awesome, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, well, one thing I want to share, especially here in LA Street Art Gallery, man, we focus a lot on the local LA uh, scene too, but obviously LA is a you know global scene just for itself, for the name of its city, right? You know. So, you know what, today, I, I, I'm so happy to have you come on because I think... You know, one of the things uh, <clears throat> that we always want to do on this show is better uh, educate ourselves and talk to more people to help better understand how people are, you know. And I, I know, especially for this uh, particular topic at hand, man, um, you know, I'm a novice, man. <clears throat> you know, I, I have, like, no idea how to, like, uh, uh, deal with this, uh, these issues sometimes. So I would like to understand a little bit more so I can be more sensitive a lot of times because um, – you know, my, my entire life, man, I, I don't really cross by too many um, uh, trans people, you, you know, and I live in uh, Orange County, like I grew up in a heavy Latino uh, area too. So, I mean, like I have, I have a few black friends, man, but you know, but even being a minority myself, man, it, it, you know, we're very segregated here in Los Angeles a lot of times, you know, every single neighborhood is like, like it's borough, man. So um, well, on top of that, I'm, I'm from Florida. I'm from a, the Redneck <laughs> Riviera. <laughs> The Redneck Riviera of Florida, okay, up in the Panhandle, Lower Alabama, some people call it. Yeah, no, it is, dude. Trust me, go there <laughs> or don't. <laughs> don't so one of the things there, man. we love diversity um, on this show, man. You, you, you know that that's the main thing, and I think that's the cool thing. Being born and bred, I, I'm born in West Covina, uh, San, San Gabriel Valley area, basically. So that's one little enclave of LA, man. And what I love about LA is diversity, man. If I want to drive over and get some bomb ass Mexican food, <clears throat> I know that <laughs> you know. I mean, I know I, I know where to go. If I want to get some like Ethiopian food, man, you know, I mean, there, there's some dope ass Ethiopian food like in Little Ethiopia too, man. So I want to you know right. a little bit more about your story, man, and like uh, where you came from and what's your background, man. Where you where well, were you I born? Am, I'm I'm actually an army brat, so I was born here in LA. But um, my first my first school experience was in Germany. My dad was a military, right? Frankfurt? So, yes, nice. absolutely. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, military right. base, and uh, it's a, one of the biggest uh, bordello. Uh, or you know, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so you know, I spent most of my life um, as an army brat, and so we moved every three years, and um, we got to understand different types of people and different different. Um, scopes of life right and so you know going through all of that and coming up um born female so i am a trans man and so um i was born female so a lot of that kind of paints the lens in which i live through life and so going through um as much as i went through in a military family as a trans person that couldn't tell that secret right or couldn't even come out and say hey i like girls or hey i like these folks or hey i like those folks um, it was interesting. And then, you know, I started at 19 in uh, Job Corps. I went to Job Corps in Utah. And so um, in Utah, I was able to kind of reinvent who I was and kind of stand in my truth. And so that was like the first time that I got to stand in my truth as me. And I won prom king in Job Corps. And so... Um, Around what year was this? Just curious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this was 2000. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like you know, a lot of times, you know, Teach always says, man, well, he can never tell. Everybody comes on the show is so young, man, you know. And well, <laughs> I'm so, well, actually, look I, so fucking I, old as the, you know, the, the white guy, which I'm, I'm actually part <laughs> Latin, you know what I mean? So, but I still look older than I really am. I look like I, I'm 55 or 60. I'm only fucking 51. And I always tell him that, uh, you know, for, for Asians, we can speak, man. Asian don't raisin, do you? You, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. So, okay. So this is in 2000. Go ahead. Yeah. So in 2000, I was 19 and I went to job court and um, I was just like, you know, I, I, this was a place that one, my parents weren't in and nobody that I knew was there and I could reinvent and really stand in my truth. And so there um, I was part of the SJ. I won prom king. And because I won prom king, they didn't like that too much. Well, a lot of the guys didn't. And so I was beaten with a pipe and they changed the rules after me. They were like, no more um, like you have to be born biologically male right after that, because like I, I sustained a concussion right after that. 
um, yeah. but I was I was part of the um, the SGA, which is the Student Government Association there, and I was part of the executive uh, group, and I was also one of the leaders of the LGBT crew, and so um, you know okay. we got a lot of go ahead. We, go ahead. I want I want to basically get a little bit deeper because first of all. Um, I've heard of Job Corps before. I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure what Job Corps is, so I'm sure a lot of our audience is probably a little bit confused too. Could you kind of explain that? Because, um, because uh, you know, I'm hearing jobs and I'm hearing prom king. Normally, I associate right. with guys. <laughs> you know <what> I'm right. <laughs> so yeah. the the Utah Center of uh, Job Corps was one of the largest. Texas is the the first largest, and then Utah comes second. And so Job Corps is literally like a it's like a a mashup between high school um job readiness and college you live in dorms um a lot of the the students there are mandated by court but then there you have those like me that had an option and it just seemed like you know free education they send you off with a check after you complete the program um i picked up a level two cert for computer engineering and okay. i picked up a welding cert um so like These literally things to do <laughs> right <laughs> solid trades man yeah right so I, I, like, I i hear that's what's wrong with this country now that people don't actually learn things like solid things to do you know you know like right, welding right. And, and programming man so <laughs> I, I think you got some uh, skills underneath your belt man you, you, you know um uh, okay so right. next thing um we kind of went into uh like i said you won prom king man and that's fucking amazing mm -hmm. man and now, okay, it, I'm just curious, and I'm very, I, I want to be able to uh, speak pol uh, correctly and non-offensively in the future. So, um, I guess, you know, when, you're, when you were uh, growing up, man, did you always, like, know you were a trans, or was there, like, a certain age that, um, you know, a lot of uh, LGBT people, they come out, right? <clears throat> you know, they discover kind of that. So, um, educate me a little bit about, like, you know, your story a little bit. So, for me, um, it, I was eight. And I was playing on the schoolyard, and like I said, um, I have I have like military background, so I was one of six. I'm the first of six siblings, and um, you know I didn't know that I wasn't biologically male, right? And so I was on the schoolyard, and I was like, "Hey, I want to play," and the boys were like, "Nah, you can't play because you're a girl." And I was like, "That's rude," and so. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I went home, I told my mom, I was like, mom, you know, these kids said I couldn't play because I was a girl. I was like, oh my God. She was like, well, you know, you, uh, you kind of are a girl. And so, <laughs> okay, yeah. you know, at, at that point, like my whole world was kind of flipped upside down. And so I went through a lot of depression through, um, through like eight to like that early part of puberty where you start to like develop and things start to happen. And, you know, sure. like as a trans guy that's menstruating, I was like, I, I don't want to do this. This is not what my life is about uh and so from there um is where i fast forwarded mm. to wow job court. that's so interesting <laughs> no i mean and you're you said you're the oldest right i'm the oldest too so uh, um uh but i only have yeah, yeah i have less siblings <laughs> obviously you know what i mean but the thing is like it's very interesting to me as an older oldest person in your family i feel like <clears throat> your younger sibling can always like look at you and be like, oh, I don't want to do that because I'm gonna get punished. <laughs> you, you know what I right. mean? While the older person, a lot of times, like we're kind of just figuring out life, like swinging blindly. I, f I feel like you know, <clears throat> we're like, right. all right, I got what my parents telling me. I'm not 100 percent sure what my parents know exactly what the fuck they're talking about. My parents were immigrants, you, you know what I mean? So, <clears throat> um, a lot of times, like, uh, like I said, it just like you know, finding myself. I totally understand, like. Uh, uh, at a young age, man, and the other people are kind of telling you what you are and what you aren't are, you, you know, I mean, so so that's right. really interesting to me, man. Got to be pretty damn intellectual at a young age to figure it out like that, though. I mean, that's... Yeah. Uh, well, it, it was, it's, it's kind of like, you know, for me, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't get to transition until I was 20, um, and that was because there was nothing, there was no reflectiveness there was no there was nobody that looked like me that was either in the media or online you know i did all the research so for a long time uh, for about 10 years i i didn't transition because there wasn't anybody that looked like me right and mm -hmm. so from there um it was interesting because once i did find somebody that looked like me and i could identify and be like okay i see myself in you and and i have a reflection to look at that's when i started to transition but i socially transitioned for about 10 years where i just walked in my gender you know and just kind of gave it a shot right and 
I knew who I was. I knew that I wasn't like everybody else. I knew that I wasn't like um, a lot of the studs that I would associate with, you know, the, the masculine lesbian um, women. And, you know, I spent a good time with them. I was part of a motorcycle club, I, you know, that was around studs and, and um, I had all of the things. But once I started to really realize that those folks didn't see themselves the way that I saw me, I was like, maybe, maybe this is not where I'm supposed to be. Right. And it wasn't yeah. until 2010 when I met my first uh, black trans man. And I was like, yo, we do this. I I'm on it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Right. And so after that, you know, it was kind of like up from there. And I started my advocacy work. And, you know, then here we are. Fast forward to the mural, like mind blown. Yeah, no, I mean, well, you also do. I saw on your feed, um, uh, you do some kind of uh, or they seminars or, or uh, you're saying advocacy groups or something like that. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about that for right. a second? So, Invisible Men is my organization. That, so, the same Invisible Men that you all saw earlier um, is my organization. <laughs> <laughs> and we do um, support and linkage to resources around trans men in particular because um, for trans men, we're often left out of a lot of conversations. We're often left out of a lot of spaces where resources are necessary. So um, I said, well, those resources that we need are not there. So especially, I'll give you an example, because sometimes this is hard to explain. Um, now, I, if I were to walk down the street, you would never know that I was trans unless we had that conversation. Not at all. Right. And so like the facial hair, the, the build, everything uh, comes with testosterone. But imagine someone looking like me. And I know some of your, your, your listeners can't, can't see me, but you know, as a, I can visualize oh. you as as a woman, though. I'm as an artist. I can I can totally visualize you know, <laughs> taking away all the all the facial hair and maybe slimming you down a little bit. But I can visualize that, yeah. Right. And the funny part is, I've I've never I've always looked like this minus facial hair. So I've always been very masculine. I've always been very big. Like I'm five eleven. Um, I'm about a good two twenty. So I'm a pretty oh, stocky man. guy walking down the street. Yeah, right? strong. So pretty good and stocky. And so can um, nobody you, ever. Um, I, I just want to like uh, to me, I guess. And again, I, I'm only using this as a, I, if someone were to say, it's like, hey, man, like you're very convincing. Is that offensive to you? It is. Okay. It, and it's, I, and, it's and I, I, to yeah, okay. quite a I, bit I, of the trans community. Sure. No, because I, I'm coming out of the place. No, because like, I, I don't want to offend, but I want to come to the table learning. You, you, you know what I mean? And I, I don't want to know, I want to know the right word because like, there is a word there that says, hey, hey I could never tell. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is is that is that offensive to you guys? Because I I want to make sure that you know I, I'm standing in the right place again. You, you know, um, well, if if I say and, I can never tell. <laughs> yeah, and I mean like that's the languaging that you all have, right? So I sure, I sure, personally sure. I'm, I'm not gonna never knock you for that, but okay. um, you know, and they call it passing privilege, but for me, even that term, even within the trans community, is problematic because like I'm not okay. passing for a man. I am a man. Yeah, sure. I understand. And I understand. So, yeah. Okay. Right. But so the term would actually be like passing. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for that. And again, like, I really appreciate, like, I, I'm just like a very ignorant about the subject and I would love to use the correct vocabulary so we can all communicate properly without like stepping on each other's toes, you know, like Asians, we get a lot of times, like some Asians are offended by like, when you say that you're Oriental, <clears throat> they're like, Hey, don't call me a rug, you, you know, or don't call me a spice or something like, like that. You know what I mean? Right. But I, but I, Dude, I just keep my mouth shut a lot these days because <laughs> man, the white guy, I was man. growing up in the Redneck Riviera, <laughs> all kinds of shit was flying. And if I talked the way I talked back then, you guys would be like, yeah, and you know, and, and, and it's very interesting because language, language changes, you, you know what I mean? Like, as I said, Oriental used to be just a regular word to describe Asian people, you know, and nowadays we can't use that word anymore because media has kind of labeled it that, A, people are using this for, uh, you know, kind of like racist feelings, intentions, you know what I mean? So right. I just want to get the audience on board with, you know, so we're all using the same verbiage. But anyways, I'm, I'm sorry. So let's continue. I mean. Uh, invisible men a little bit about that more and I also saw that you got married congratulations I would love to Thank know a little you. bit more about that as well absolutely so invisible men um, we, we do linkage to resources so you have trans men like me that that for for all intents and purposes the word passing um, and could you imagine me going to the OBGYN asking for service it'd be tough <laughs> right. it's, it's a little tough yeah <clears throat> wow right. yeah so, so that's where that's where 
the necessity for trans men specific resources and trans masculine specific resources come into play. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's, that's not the only, it's not the only resources that we, we need to have. So around even HIV. Um, so I'm, I'm personally HIV negative and there are so many trans men that are out there that are HIV negative, but here's the thing. There have been um, research study, re, research studies that have, found out that 90% of trans men identify outside of being straight. So whether they're pansexual, whether they're bisexual, whether they're asexual, whatever that looks like, they out identify outside of being straight. So that puts us even further on, on this spectrum um, of folks that need to be looked at around HIV. But because the medical facilities and a lot of the researchers are looking at us and pegging us with um, the same sexual behaviors as lesbians, which put them at a, at a lower risk, right? So they're, they're saying that trans men have the same risk as lesbians because they're assuming that most trans men are with biological born women. Oh, I, I, see, I see what you're saying, yeah. Oh, wow. now, Good right. grief. Yeah, no, and I mean- so if you have gay trans men, you have bisexual trans men, and they're thinking with all the risk factors, then we need to be in that risk factor category in order to be looked at and studied because we don't know what the risk is for us for real because nobody's studying that, right? This is and so, also, I, 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 <laughs> you, no, you, to be honest, man, I just went, like, yeah, right. No, this is <clears throat> because, you, you know, because, uh, you know, I, I feel like people just, I, including myself till this moment, man, I literally sometimes I'm just like, what's all the arguing about sometimes? Like, as a, uh, a person who's, uh, you know, born man, and I was lucky enough to not have to ha face any psychological issues of my own gender, you know what I mean? A lot of times, there are a lot of things that you have to deal with in the science community that you have to study different groups, basically. Right. And every whether you're Asian, whether you're white, whether you're black, and different uh, lifestyle preferences because of your quote-unquote gender, um, it, it changes certain factors, man. And um, dude, you, you literally just made me get it, get it, bro. You, you know, in terms of like <laughs> the, the, the study stuff, man. So thank you for that, man. Um, yeah. and like I said, I, and just the fact that you said that some, um, a lot of transgender women, maybe trans more trans just transition from one side to the other. Now there's more of a focus, uh, on one certain type of transgender. And then, uh, this other group is missing out, man. And I think, um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just really interesting. To, and I'm so fortunate to, as a, as a minority, I'm like, Hey man, if we want to talk about um, rare in terms of people who are mixing out the market segment, if you're a black <laughs> transgender, you, you know, and, and and you're a street artist too, you, you know, you know right. what I mean. You're, you're <laughs> truly another unicorn of the graffiti oh. world. <laughs> I, I gotta tell, you, I gotta tell you actually, I, I I did some, I did a when we when we had Brittany Price on last week, uh, she's one of the uh, black female street artists. I clicked, I made the hashtag black female street artist. And there are two, <laughs> basically, you know what I mean? Oh, wow. So so I was like, this is truly a unicorn, man. And uh, for us to have Lucky You on today, I, like I said, we always want to promote diversity and hear voices from all neighborhoods, man. And God damn, did you just open my mind right now? Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for helping us to uh, learn and at the same time teach others, man. It's awesome. Absolutely. Man. Absolutely. So that's, that's what, uh, what we do with Invisible Men. And we also we use that platform to be able to uplift and kind of amplify those voices of other trans men that don't get to hurt, get to be heard. Right. Mm. So everybody doesn't have a, a mural or doesn't have, you know, all of these different accesses to different things. And so we want to make sure that everybody gets heard. And so um, the platform itself on our website, if you go to invisible, um, the letter T M E N men.com. Um, if you go to the website, there's a tab called our stories, our lives. Right. And so that tells the, the different stories of these trans masculine individuals and how they navigate through the world and gives you to get to know other, you know, because I could tell my story all day long, but that's that story is going to be unique to me. But we wanted to make sure we uplifted the stories of so many others. Absolutely. Yeah. Help so other people to relate. The more stories you get out there, the more people are going to have to relate. Absolutely. And so this one has um, there's 28 stories from 28 different transmasculine folks. And I say transmasculine because not everybody identifies as a man, but they do identify on the masculine spectrum. And so um, I wanted to make sure that we uplift all of those different stories and all of those different folks. And as you can see, uh, the website is very diverse. We have so many different kinds of transmasculine folks there um, that have told their story and they tell their story. We We are not the storytellers. We don't edit it. We don't change anything about their story. So however they write it, you're reading their words, 
Wow. Okay. I love that. That <clears throat> One of the things that um, we always want to do is, you know, we want to kind of showcase street artists uh, from all over the world, tell them their story, man. I think that that's something similar that you guys are doing, telling the, the stories of, uh, uh, of, of these individuals as well, man. And dude, this is so cool, man. And I, I got to tell you something. There's so much in the news <clears throat> about, especially with some of the, uh, the figure, I don't want to say figurehead, some of the more covered, like, for example, Kate, let's just talk about Caitlyn Jenner, you, you know, for example. Um, <clears throat> she, I, I can tell already right now, like, she's not the best representative or quote unquote activist of your community, man. And <clears throat> um, yeah, it's, it, let me have your thoughts on that a little bit, man. Um, I'll say that Caitlyn Jenner is interesting, and I'll leave it there. <laughs> You're very kind. It's very kind. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I think I think at least one of the things that I've learned, at least just through my journey of trying to make sense of it all, is that, mm -hmm. hey, not everybody is <clears throat> on the same spectrum of vocal opinion to in terms of like, uh, how, you, you know, how much they want to express themselves on, on this uh, issue if you are a transgender person as well, too. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times we have <clears throat> the media kind of portraying, hey, this group is doing this and they want to change this. <clears throat> you, right. you know what I mean? And it's just yeah. like, hey, you know, it, it's a deep conversation. You, you know, it's not so much like, hey, we want to go inside. Uh, we want to use the restrooms. You know, I mean, and that's the headline right. usually it gets, right? <laughs> you, right. You know and I mean? see, even now, I'm going to jump in there on the rest yeah. of the situation. Yeah. So, you know, like, they have all these politicians that are out there and they want these restroom bills and, and they don't want trans women in the restroom with their ladies and all of these things. But then you have guys like me that look like me and you want us to use the restrooms that are assigned at birth. You want me in your women's restroom? I really don't think so. I really don't think so. they, they, they're sleeping on us. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I and you know what? Just, I just want to interject right quick. Um, it seems to me that, uh, you know, looking at all the information and, and over time, how, you know, more and more uh, people, you know, seem to, uh, as time goes by, different types of people become more plentiful. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, transgender, whatever, I think they're going to become more plentiful um, just because, uh, you know, it's, it's acknowledged now and it helps to bring those people who actually are, you know, into, you know, living that way and, and you know, breeding with others and, and creating more. So, um, you know, I, I think this is really important that we get this, you know, right, because this is, you know, going to um end up worse than racism if uh if it goes the wrong way right but see i i want to i want to first point out like trans folks have always 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 been here right and so the only reason that you're starting to see more trans folks is because now we're not hiding anymore we're not standing in the shadows we're not gonna you know kick it in the back room anymore like literally we're we're engineers we're doctors we're artists right and um we're just not gonna hide anymore. And that's that's why you're seeing more and more trans folks because it is becoming uh, more and more mainstream and folks are being able to stand in their truth and be solid about it and say, hey, look, this is who I am. And it's just, it is what it is. All I'm asking for is respect. I don't want anybody to accept the life choices that I've made for myself because like, however you feel about that is your business, right? Because it's my life. I'm not asking you to accept it. I just want respect as a person, as a human. Yeah. My point is it's, it just brings out the importance of uh, invisible men, you know, right. uh, things like that help to, uh, to accomplish this, you know, Absolutely. Um, and uh, it's awesome, man. I just so much respect for bringing that together. How long, how long has it, uh, has it been together now? So invisible men has been, um, we will be three years in March of next year. Amazing, man. The, the, those first years are kind of like, I feel like when you start to build any organization, any businesses, like the passion and the fuel is there, but it never, it, it, you know, you never want to be an overnight success because if you're an overnight success, you're going to be over as fast as you, right. <laughs> you started, you, you know what I mean? Right. And I'll tell you right now, man, it's so, you know, you know, you're bringing like, like you said, people are sleeping on you, <laughs> your, your, your segment, man, you know, and uh, you know, one, one, one of the things I want to do, man, is we have this segment called check your feed basically where we bring up your uh instagram feed and 
Again, I want to. I'm not gonna let you talk. Get away with that about talking about getting married, man. You, you, you know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. No we're gonna problem. do. Check your feed. 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 <laughs> oh, don't cut off the bell. You cut off the bell at the end there. Oh uh, no, you laughed. It, it, it cut, I, I heard the bell, man. So, so tell us about tell us about your uh, your your marriage, man. You know, look, sure. Look, wonderful picture, man. <laughs> Amazing. And yeah. around the same time as the uh, the mural was painted, basically, right? Well, see, it was painted the month prior, and um, because of you know, I, I have a relationship with the city. I'm on the trans advisory council for LA City. Oh. And so um, awesome. before, before it was gone, um, I talked to my wife and I was like, uh, so babe, look, check it out. They're getting ready to remove it. And I want to, I want to get married on it. And I think it took her like 2.5 seconds to be like, okay, I'm here for it. And I was like, <laughs> yes, because literally we had, we had scheduled our wedding um, about a year out from now. Like we still would be in, in our planning phase but i was like yo i think that this is a moment right now and because you know we both identify somewhere in that in that diaspora of the the mural and it means a lot to us um she was like yeah i'm here for it and so we got married on the mural literally we, we planned it in 14 days dude amazing wow. man. <laughs> dude you look sharp there in that photo man looking thank sharp you. thank you appreciate it. your wife too man wow beautiful yeah. Kids are happy, man. Kids are happy, man. Bring, bring, that, that, brings, that brings happiness to me, man. Definitely. And now, so, okay, so I want to kind of go back a little bit farther because, I mean, yeah, this isn't your first time painting outside, though. That's for sure, man, because I'm seeing, I'm seeing some uh, – I, I, I'm going to bring this picture up, and I'm just like, huh, this, this, is, uh, this is quite interesting. You've been traveling a little bit, too, um, yeah. on, your, on your adventures, <laughs> too, right? <laughs> basically, yeah. this is the Soweto Towers, basically. If, you, if you're just yeah, listening to – yeah, if you're just listening to the podcast, man, I mean, I'm seeing like two Simpsons, uh, uh, you, you know, kind of like chimneys going stacks. up, stack, chimney stacks, stacks going up, you know what I mean? Tell us a little bit about the South Africa trip, man. So the South Africa trip um, was actually um, some work that I was doing with another organization called the Brown Boy Project, where we were out there working with some LGBTQ advocates out there and really um, just, you know, figuring out like how we can collab on different projects and whatnot for um, our respective communities. And so it was a three week trip and um, it was amazing. So we, we got to see so much of South Africa. We went to Soweto, we went to Durban, we went to Johannesburg. And so um, it was an amazing trip. It, it was one of the, the most um, spiritual trips I've ever been on. Oh, okay. Now let me ask you, um, do you know what part uh, of Africa your family is originally from? Like uh, your ancestors? I don't. Okay, awesome, don't. awesome. No, I'm just but, curious because. But just like it, it's it's weird, right? Because just like here, where um, we can look at a demographic and be like, oh, they're from such and such, and they're from such and such. Literally, they can tell the tribes that way. And so they told me I looked Zulu. So. Oh really? That's cool, yeah. man. No, I was yeah. always curious about that. Sounds you, awesome, Zulu. Like you said, yeah. it's like. <laughs> It's Zulu Somebody, warrior. <laughs> it's funny because for my wedding, that's an actual Zulu warrior crown. Oh, the uh, the one with, I saw the uh, mm -hmm. it has some hairs on it. Or I'm sorry, yeah, so it's right? Let me pull, let me pull it back up because I was noticing. I was like, what I mean, man, looking sharp as that Zulu this, king, this, man. Uh, this, yeah. <laughs> this is pretty fly right here. Uh, so yeah, oh, it's a here. Zulu king that. warrior uh, headdress. Right there, man. Check that out, man. Yes. It's yeah, awesome. <laughs> That's cool, man. So, um, so uh, let's kind of go back into we we, we kind of skip back a little bit about we talked about high school and prom. For me, I mean, it, uh, it, you know, prom was one of those things that I stopped by for like five minutes and then uh, you, you know, you know, we we left basically. I was a slacker in high school. Like we never went to anything. But um, <clears throat> for you, man, I mean, that must have been a, like a life changing moment for. Uh, uh, you especially after the fact that you were beaten by a lead pipe because of because of that yeah. whole thing, man. So, I mean, <clears throat> um, I'm guessing you're around like uh, you're still a teenager at this time, basically, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm hitting I'm just barely hitting 20 at this time, and um, you know, it's one of those things that it it kind of didn't matter um, what was kind of thrown at me with regard to my transition. It still made me want to move forward because I knew who I was, right? 
and for me, it was either transition or die. And it was just, it was just that, um, that intense for me. So I had been through a lot more than just that, that pipe. I guess that was probably like the precursor to a lot of the stuff that I dealt with because, you know, I transitioned medically in Compton. And so, um, the, the homeboys in the hood wasn't, wasn't too keen on that. So for about two years, um, the first two years of my transition, I was beaten up almost daily. Wow. <clears throat> so, you know, you, you learn how to, you learn how to, uh, well, we, I mean, Compton's already a tough neighborhood growing up. We've had, uh, some like people in the hip hop industry come up just talking about, you know, you're, you're just trying to go home from school, riding your bike a lot of times. Right. <clears throat> you you right. know what I mean? And then some fool will, like drop kick you off your bike. You, you, you know, <laughs> like right. risky, uh, risky forever was telling us about some stories in, yeah. in Englewood. And uh, yeah. I, I'm telling you, man, like I, I totally see it. Like, you know, as a kid, it's tough growing up, but dealing with it kind of like a whole um, transition, transition issue, man, that must have been on a different level, man. So then let me ask you, were you always doing art during this period of time? Because it seems like you had so much other stuff going on. I mean, was this kind of like, <clears throat> um, you know, how did you get into that basically because you're moving around so much yeah we see like art because like i started off as like a poet i started off like mm. writing poetry and that was how i got a lot of the that's art yeah like that's how i got a lot of the stuff in my head out right and then um i started moving into like computer design and so i was like okay well i can i can because i was i'm a computer nut let's start there right i'm a computer nice. like with and I've got, like, if you look at my setup right now, there's literally three laptops I'm looking at. Um, <laughs> Are you a gamer? Nice. Are you a gamer by any chance? Unfortunately, not. <laughs> Good. I'm not, I'm not either. I'm not, I just want to, right. the audience would like to know, like, what kind of computer nut you are. I, I literally have, like, three laptops as I'm working, too, because, you know, my brain, mm -hmm. like, works in different baskets. And uh, I do music, right. too, you know what I mean? But anyways, please go on. So right. computers, and then uh, how did you transition from that into actually picking up the brush, it seems? Well, see, it's it. To be honest, this this mural is the first first one that like has been on a large scale. Normally, a lot of the art that I do is computer graphic, so I do um, a lot of graphic design, um, and so this is the biggest that I've ever seen it. I'm like, oh my god, it's on the ground, like I can go touch it. And normally, a lot of my art is through the screen, so I'm not able to like really like put my fingers on it. But this is one that that um, not only meant a lot to me, my community, and and anyone that's going to see it later, you know, like generations later, but it was the first one that I actually got to literally put my hands on. How did it come about? How did, uh, were you approached or did you approach somebody? How did that, uh, the street mural come about? So what happened was black, which stands for black LGBTQ activists for change. Um, we had, I was part of their, um, uh, well, I still am part of their board and we had, organized the march that was to follow the day after the original was laid on the ground and so um rick from trailer park group across the street from where the original mural is um rick came to the city and said hey look um we would like to put black lives matter on the on the the street before you you march and they were like okay well we need to talk to black they're organizing this so they came to me um because i was the connect between black and the city they came to me and they said hey look we got um an organization that wants to do this like we need to talk to you all before about it first and so um i got on a conference call with black along with gerald who is um, the head of black and the city and rick and we got all together and they were like here this is what we want to do and i said well look if we're gonna if we're gonna march to it and we're gonna really want to put this message here then we need to be inclusive about it and i want to change what it looks like and they're like hey okay you want to change what it looks like no problem and i was like okay so nice. you know i brought them a mock-up and was like you know and computer design this is what i do right so hey. now i'm looking and i really wanted to include all of the different demographics that fall inside of the black community right so you have your trans folks your lgbt folks your non-binary folks but all those folks are still black first because that's what's that's what people see first is we're black and so um i wanted to make sure it encompassed all of that and then with the second iteration i also wanted to pay homage to all of our ancestors amazing man awesome, Again, man. like i said it's it's always so much it's so nice to uh you know like i said we, we'll talk to anybody on this podcast and you know there are people that you know it's, they feel i like got a question for you on. right quick what uh <laughs> sorry james no worries, um no worries, so ahead. from i just like time factor of how long uh it took 
from um, when you came up with the, the design for the street and it being painted? About how long of time was that? 48 hours. Ooh. What? For the, for, the, for, the, for the first iteration, it was 48 hours. Wow. And so okay. the second iteration was two and a half months. Oh, okay. okay. They gave you a yeah, little bit of more time. Go, everybody's <laughs> yeah. got okay. You know what I mean? It's got to right, go down right. the line. Yeah. Is that okay? Right. Okay. Is he okay with it? Is they okay with it? Are they okay with it? <laughs> right. right? So, yeah. yeah. For the first iteration, it was. Yeah. So for this oh, iteration, it was yeah. 48 hours. Right. Wow. What a, what a picture. Okay. So you mentioned earlier something that I, uh, again, I'm always very curious. And <clears throat> you, you mentioned something about the trans colors, actually. I've never heard of that before um is that you're saying that that's blue and white basically or um blue pink and white and those those are the colors of all oh okay okay i see i'm a little bit colorblind man so sometimes i see pink as white bro so, so like yeah no the <laughs> the pink the pink on the newest pink, iteration, i see it yeah yeah it, it's a little little bright yeah no but it's cool man you know, you know yeah. I, I love that because it's we you know we haven't talked about um what kind of led to all this i guess you know when george floyd <clears throat> uh you know w was murdered by the police officer man i mean um you, you know to f for you for you man have you ever dealt with like any police officers because we that's one of the things we often talk about on the show like street artists going outside <clears throat> talking to police officers last week we talked yeah. to Brittany price it's one of our listeners always want to hear the the you know the cops rolling up on them story you know or yeah man i was putting up this piece you know and then all of a sudden there's the cops there and i fucking ran and they ran after me you know but i but, but last, I, but last I hit week him. i hit the cop he went down and i, was, <laughs> and I ran and i and i escaped in free that's you know that'll be a story one time but last week i felt like was one of the first times i'd ever heard uh, this story of this kind. We had Brittany uh, Price, actually. She's doing her, uh, she, you know, black female street artist. She's doing her mm -hmm. um, uh, <clears throat> projector laid up, everything nicely, right, you know, onto the wall. And then uh, clearly doing a mural. We wanted to wait until sundown so it's not too hot, obviously, right? And then all of a sudden, 10 police cars. <laughs> Still before curfew, mind Still you. Still before curfew, you know, swarmed wow. them. And basically, uh, you know, and I was like, I said, we've had over 100 episodes of this show and we've talked to everybody i've never heard of somebody painting a mural you, you know it's not like you're trying to like you know with some cans or something like that it's like she's just putting the sketch you know and i was like that right. you know it's crazy to hear uh, you know that kind of shit happen and you know at the end of the day man i gotta say it's probably because she's black man you, you know that that those police officers were just like and her boyfriend her boyfriend and, and her boyfriend was, was also black yeah too. exactly and that's right. what she was and, saying yeah and I'm, I'm sure that that may have had something to do with her experience. Um, on the other hand, I didn't, I didn't have that experience uh, because the city sanctioned it. So um, there was a, the, the first iteration, um, Rick over at Trailer Park had obtained a permit for the, for the, the painting itself. And That's so, the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. So they donated the paint and volunteers to help us get it all on the ground. And so it literally happened um, from sunup to sundown. I think they started at 6 a.m. in the morning and they were finished by about four or five. And we had so many like people to come out and volunteer and help us paint it. Yeah, this is um, something official. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, you, you know, actually, I take it back. Brittany, actually, how they got away was because they showed them the papers, basically. But mm -hmm. I mean, to have 10 police officers come and, uh, you, you know, like it's just uh, quite a frightening experience. But uh, you, I think you're right, Lucky. This is the way. You know, when you have the connection with the city like you do, you know, you get helpers coming out, you get news cover <laughs> coverage, right? It's a little well, less. It, it was more. It was more like everybody wanted. Everybody came together to get that done. So the t mm. the city had a hand in that. Um, our organization had a hand in that, and Rick from Trailer Park, we all had a hand in that. So everybody knew what was going on. And so you know, once we went out there and we we got it done, like it was dope, you know. And maybe it is because of you know the the connect but at the same time like everybody was genuinely wanting to do this amazing man amazing i think so i mean i want to take you back um one second man i mean um when george when the whole george floyd passed uh and that you know covid was going on um everybody started coming outside to uh protest and everything like kind of take us back to your how your mind was like did it spark something that you know i got to do something about this what was going on through your mind at the time well, when George Floyd happened, you know, um, it infuriated me. Let me start there, right? Because there's somebody that is reflective of me, and I'm raising a black son. 
Um, and so, you know, my son just turned 18 not too long ago. Um, and it was, it was infuriating, but what, what kind of pressed me to this mural was the death of Tony McDade. Tony McDade was a black trans man who was killed by police two days after George Floyd. And nobody gave him the time of day to even uplift his name. And Breonna Taylor's name was out there, Aubrey, um, his name, all of these other folks that had been killed relatively in the same time frame. Um, and Tony McDade was missed. And so I was like, I, I'm tired of the LGBT, LGBT people getting missed, right? And then right. on top of that, I had um, trans women friends or trans sisters that were out there protesting and still getting beat up in the middle of a Black Lives Matter protest. Black yeah. trans women getting beat up in the middle of a Black Lives Matter protest. And so um, that that was more about all of those lives because, yeah, Black Lives Matter, and I'm about that 100%. But all black lives need to matter to all black people, to, to everyone, as a matter of fact, right? Because well said. Um, just, just. Um, Can't be picking and choosing. Right. And so there's a lot of cherry picking that happens with the black lives that are uplifted, those black lives that are honored. Um, and I wanted to make sure that we honored Tony McDade and all of our other lost folks that have died due to, due to um, police brutality. No, you're right. I mean, to be honest, I, 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 you know, you just educated me again, man. <laughs> you know, like I, it's, the media for some reason uh, never, you know, got around to telling me about it. And I try to cover it a little bit. I can't get covered, listen too much, or else I get depressed. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, yeah Tony McDade made got to tune out at some point, man. <laughs> May twenty seventh, twenty twenty, Tallahassee Police Department. Y you know, um, Tallahassee. Uh, yeah, there's Florida for you. Fucking oh man idiots. well it, like again these are Tallahassee's the not far from the redneck riviera mind you there's a lot of fucking rednecks in tallahassee and i guarantee you is a fucking redneck sheriff that did it that's like right at the beginning of the, the the panhandle basically uh uh for for the people no that that's <clears throat> that's very you know today i saw another thing in the news that uh in the philippines uh duterte um, he pardoned somebody who killed like a trans man uh, an american uh soldier who uh killed a trans man in uh, the Philippines at Pardoned a bar. Him? <clears throat> yeah, let me pull that up real quick. Um, because- uh, oh, Fuck it, Duterte, man. That guy is a fucking idiot. Yeah, it's just, to me, it's just very interesting because it's like, you know, like like Lucky said, man, we gotta be, um, you know, if we say Black Lives Matter, we gotta say all Black Lives Matter, man. And it's like, hey, if we're gonna be upset about George Floyd, man, um, you know, we got to be upset about these other ones because these are the same exact cases and these people get even right. <clears throat> less uh, of a platform, less of a voice, man. So here, here's the, uh, here, here it is. Um, yeah, Philippines par president pardons U.S. Marines for killing transgender woman, basically. I guess what happened was, uh, you know, the, this person was, uh, uh, you know, they met at a bar, they went back and then um, I guess... Uh, uh, you, you know, something happened and then they left, uh, he left and then he ended up killing her, um, and leaving her in the bathroom, you know, and then again, like, uh, Duterte is parting her today, I'm sure for some political, political reasons, you know what I mean? But, um, uh, the, the person was called Jennifer, uh, Loud base, Jennifer Loud case, L-A-U-D-E, <clears throat> you know, it just happened. Um, it's six hours ago on BBC. I was just looking at that, man. I mean, these cases are pretty common in the trans transgender community right <clears throat> right unfortunately so um you know every year you know in november we have trans day of remembrance where we we literally read off a list of names of all of those folks that have been killed due to transphobic so um you know and worldwide last year we had over 330 people that were killed because of transphobia just because people didn't like them because they were trans and, okay, did um, I, did, I'm sorry, did I hear you say that uh, you're also raising the child? Yes, A 18, he's a, yep. Yeah. Yep, I did Man, give what, birth, because I feel like that's the next question. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was trying to figure yeah. out the nicest way around to get into that. Yeah, um, I did give birth to him. Okay. I actually have four kids, I adopted the other three. Amazing. Wow, you adopted, dude, that is awesome. Right. Um, I was, I was, you know, if I was ever going to have kids, I was, you know, I was like, you know what, there's already too many kids here that have no parents, um, you know, but uh, when I met my wife, she was actually going to have her own anyway, so I figured, well, 
kind of like they're already here anyway. Um, right. I'd already decided <laughs> that if I met a woman that already had children, I'm fine with helping to raise them. You know what I mean? I've never had the right. desire to have, man, I want to have my name, you know, keep going. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got to establish my line. I know for my name type. a legacy, you know, my blood's got a shit, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, fuck that. I, I, I could care less. You know what I mean? Um, no, I'm in the I'm in the I'm never fucking having kids department just just by the way I work in music man <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean and everybody tells me like this is too much of a responsibility for how immature I am man so <laughs> you know <laughs> but but hey, anyway at least you're honest with yourself though, yeah yeah right? yeah man I mean like I said man my parents did a great job and I know I can never do as well as them man and that's one of the main reasons why I actually don't have kids I feel like a lot of my friends who have kids they they want to do a better job than they they received a lot of times you know what i mean and right. you know everybody has different reasons of why they have kids man but <clears throat> i'm just, i'm just very interested uh let's let's kind of go back we're, we're talking about this uh, Duterte case and we um uh, now you said that 330 uh just trans people were killed around the world just because they were right. trans man right now, <clears throat> and so that's just around transphobia and we're talking about um, the U.S. saw, I think it was close to 27, 28 cases last year, um, and just around the world in a lot of the Latin countries, um, Brazil, Chile, a lot of those is where we get the, the most hate. Now, and that's, <clears throat> go ahead. I'm, I, think, I think a lot of, um, let's just call it like cisgendered people, I, especially mm -hmm. men, I think that's what <clears throat> the fear a lot of times is uh it's like hey like i i didn't sign up for this or what what a lot of times or whatever i mean obviously it's not a, it's not right but i'm just saying like um i guess i i am just saying like how what what is a like a better way for people to i guess be more tolerant of this whole situation i mean you, you know what i mean because i i know some fucking idiots like whoa he he did this you, you know what i mean he like right right so i'm just curious because I'm sorry if I'm not coming off super PC, man, but I'm just, I want to no, ask okay. questions that the audience would, uh, anyways, yeah. Right. No, I think that, um, one, there's, there's no really good solid reason for murdering someone. Of course, you didn't no. Like, <laughs> yeah. like how they hey, came across, right? There's, there's no really good solid. So I think that one, let's start there. Let's stop just murdering people because you don't yeah, like them. Of course. Um, Two, I think if people just stop to understand trans folks as a whole, and then individually, whoever you're dealing with, like really sit down and talk to those folks, really sit down and, and get to know trans people. Because I think if they saw the humanity in, in trans people, because we're not some monolithic creatures that are just like moving in silence, right? So um, if they really stop to get to know trans people and really understand who they are and what their life is and how they navigate, um, it would be a lot harder to hurt someone if you see their humanity at least that's how i feel sure sure right. no no i i think i think that's a great and i'm sorry that was kind of like an off the wall question man but i just wanted to address <clears throat> address things that like, especially because we have you on the podcast man because mm -hmm. um you know personal experience man it's like again be even being a dj in hollywood uh sometimes like you know trans people come to my parties we all have a good time man you know and it's like mm -hmm. but you're right i think at the end of the day it's really about every single person individually is different man everybody has their own story and it's like, hey, we can't just <clears throat> group people into <laughs> one market segment and try to sell right. them something. That, that, I mean, that's what corporations do, man. They say, hey, you guys are all the same. So we're going to try to kind of do a one size fits all for you guys <clears throat> a lot of times. And I, I think that's great. You advice. know what? I, I th it, it really comes down to tolerance. You know, yeah. it really comes down to tolerance. And I think that um, lately, because of, uh, of the behavior of the leadership, in this country, yep. it uh, has shown a lot less tolerance and he's and a lot more name calling and a lot more bullying. So right. it's, it's really no he surprise. Signals, he signals all of those folks that are on his page. And so like once that signal is given, like it's like all, all war, you know, <laughs> it's just like goodness. We just, trans people are no different than other people, right? We, we live and breathe and bleed and die and and have aspirations and everything else right so 100%. why would we be any different right so i'm just like like for me i'm a trans guy and i've given birth to kids yeah my my journey looks much different than maybe one of you's right but at the same time i have aspirations i have goals like i fly helicopters just because they told me i couldn't fly helicopters right what 
Yeah. Wait a second. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> a little sidebar story here. Uh, when did uh, when did you learn? It's how on to my fly it's on my Instagram. We were all of my it's on oh, yeah, Instagram. Oh yeah 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 yeah. There's a whole video there. Yeah, you just tucked my it in one little flight. corner, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, now, when did when did you learn how to fly a helicopter and where? Um. So so last year I started um, I started training for um, uh, I started learning for my my helicopter pilot's license. So I just one day I was like, yo, I really really want a helicopter but i was like maybe i should learn to fly them before i buy one <laughs> so it's like you know you you learn to, to fly you know to drive a car before you buy one and everybody was like that ah, you know you're you're not like it is what it is you're not going to fly helicopters okay sure so i found a um a flight school out in torrance and you know every every time i can get a little little change uh pulled up then i go and get me more hours and then i have about 12 more hours um until i get my license you're supposed to have something like uh 36 48 and so but each hour is like 100 bucks so you know i gotta wait till i get a little change and then as soon as i get my pilot's license i'm going to get me a helicopter <laughs> hey man we should sort of go fund me for your something too man i mean i mean to be honest i'm like, here for it i'm totally <laughs> here for it you seem like you know I'm, I'm a computer nut so at one point i was telling my wife i was like hey i'm just gonna I'm just going to print all of the parts, put one together. I like, got 3D printers. Like, why not? This dude made a, a Lamborghini with 3D printers, so I, I can that. make a helicopter with a hell 3D yeah, printer. Hell yeah, hell <laughs> yeah, I man. saw that. You know yeah. what, I lo what I love, man? I can Except tell. for the glass part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll Except be for the glass part. We'll hook you up with some uh, acrylic for that, man. We'll I'm here for you. it. You know what I love, man? You definitely see, just seem like one of those people that's like, all right, you're going to tell me I can't? Watch exactly me watch me fly right. <laughs> you, know, you know what i mean and right. i think <clears throat> that's uh one of the things that we need to take away from this story man i, mm -hmm. I think it's just like the perseverance of you know, you know being yourself man finding your own voice man especially for me as an artist man as a musician this is one of the things i'm struggling with all the time mm -hmm. um like how do i want to like represent myself and uh communicate to the outer world exactly how i feel man and i think for you it's just like I actually, I feel like you maybe have that skill locked down better than me, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so like, amazing, man. Honestly, it's just all so awesome to talk to you, man. Um, Teach, we're Thank coming you. up on an hour, man. So is there anything like, uh, you, you know, you want to talk to Lucky about? Um, oh, dude, I could, I could continue. I could talk for hours. I got all kinds of questions, well, well, but I just noticed that my uh, computer, I, I thought I plugged in the, the charger as well. My new uh, stuff I got here, but it's down to like 10 percent. it's about to cash out my uh <laughs> ipad and hey, the you, charger's you, not recharging it so i'm about you to wish you had lucky there anyway. to help you right now right i know right <laughs> yeah i fixed those things it I it <laughs> yeah i could use some it help here but, I'm here for it. but you know what lucky normally we're actually we're gonna start doing it back in the um the studio soon in person um in person you know what i mean and uh we've been kind of like um, coming up to this one, we were supposed to have a St. Patrick's Day party, and uh, obviously, <clears throat> you, you know, whole COVID happened, and then uh, right. <laughs> we, we got canceled, right? So, I mean, we're kind of going to have, like, a, a, a big get-together of all the people who've been on the podcast, man, and also just start having um, episodes back in the studio again. So, we'd love okay. to invite you on and bring over uh, any artists that you would want to have a platform on LA Street Art Gallery, man, and because we want everybody- Bring your wife. Exactly. Yeah, I'm here for it. Bring Hell yeah, kids. man. And um, I'm definitely here for it. Yeah. You know, like I said, you're VIP at our parties, definitely, because I know a lot of people uh, definitely want to talk to you about, you, you know, uh, <laughs> LA Council and everything like that, too, man. Right. So, so again, man, just uh, thank you so much, man, for coming on. And um, I, if Absolutely. somebody wants to reach it's out, it's truly to an you, honor to have you on, man. <laughs> Well, yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Tons of respect all. for you, man. But again, you got to you got to come you. back in the studio and hang out with us in person cuz this is just I'm like, here for it. You know, I mean, this is like a runner up prom king. You, you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm all definitely right. here for it. Hell yeah, man. So, if people want to come reach out to you, man, like how can they find you? They can find me at Lucky Alexander on my Instagram and it's L U C K I E Alexander. Um and then uh Invisible Transmen. So yeah, it's invisible. Yeah, so it's invisible. Transmit on um, Instagram as well, and then um, our uh, website. Our website is invisible. The letter T, and the word men m e n dot com. Awesome, awesome, and you can go check out 
all those uh, unique perspectives there that we were talking about earlier on the show, man. And again, let's stay in touch because I, I think, uh, you know, you're a great resource. And uh, thank you for putting up with, uh, you know, our mouth uh, jumble today when we were trying to- <laughs> Our ignorance. No yeah, problem. yeah, our ignorance, no you know what I mean? And uh, hey, thank you for teaching you know us. I, and I appreciate y'all for asking with respect. And so yeah. that's, that's the dope part. I really appreciate y'all. Awesome. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, man. And uh, again, uh, well, you're welcome back anytime. You just let us know, and we're going to promote the shit out of uh, you for this episode, man. So I'm here for it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. To the audience, love you guys. Take care and peace. Thank you, Lucky. You're welcome. You too, have you been? The love you take. You see.